Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited, EAA, FAA, and others work to promote safety-enhancing equipment. Pilot's Bill of Rights says no to the FAA. University of North Dakota adds a Robinson Cadet helicopter trainer. Hello, I'm Christopher C. Odom. It's January 23rd, 2017, and this is Airborne Unlimited. A proposed new compliance pathway for parts manufacturer approval for manufacturing of low-risk safety-enhanced avionics and other low-risk equipment emerged during a January 17th meeting in Oshkosh between EAA top FAA officials and aviation industry members. This alternate approach would be based on a tiered system that provides different methods to show a compliant quality system and varied levels of oversight based on the level of risk associated with the specific equipment being certified. Sean Elliott, EAA's Vice President of Advocacy and Safety said in part, this is a major breakthrough in an area that was pioneered with the supplemental type certificate work by EAA, FAA, and Dynon introduced last April. Elliott added, this is indicative of the cooperative solution-based approach that has been part of EAA's advocacy philosophy since Paul Proberezny founded the organization more than 60 years ago. Combining this type of cooperation with the newly presented FAR Part 23 regulations is a foretelling of good things in the future. A foreign pilot has been cleared of charges that he falsified an FAA medical application form and an emergency order of revocation of his airman privileges has been reversed. His attorney says that the case is the first intentional falsification matter where the pilot's Bill of Rights medical reform mandates that became law in 2012 played a key role in the victory. The foreign corporate pilot stood accused of failing to report an arrest on his FAA medical. In a complex set of circumstances, the FAA-initiated emergency revocation procedure contains extremely compressed schedules, requiring both trial and appeal to be completed within 60 days. Having been found in non-compliance by the FAA, the pilot had an incredibly short time to respond. AOPA attorneys attacked the issue, and after a complex series of court hearings and appeals, the FAA was found to be in non-compliance with tenets of the Pilot Bill of Rights, and the revocation was reversed. After the break, University of North Dakota likes the Robinson R-44 Cadet. Based on the popular Sling 2 LSA, the Sling 4 was designed to be the most practical and desirable lightweight four-place experimental aircraft on the market. Find out more about this 115 horsepower turbocharged airplane at airplanefactory.com. There's a difference between charting a steady course and pushing for the ceiling. And for nearly a century, Hartzell Propeller has been defining that difference. It's in our passion for engineering and research and our dedication to testing the limits of performance. We are built on honor. We are Hartzell Propeller. Concord's recombinant gas RG series sealed battery technology produces a high performance battery with the advantages of being pre-tested and fully charged at the factory. Find out more about Concord's entire line of batteries at www.concordbattery.com. Concord, the heart of your aircraft. Welcome back. If you'd like to be a supporter of Airborne Unlimited, send an email to jim at aero-news.net. Earlier this month, Robinson Helicopter Company delivered an R-44 cadet to the University of North Dakota. This is the first cadet to be used in UND's flight training program. It's reported that UND Aerospace owns the largest civilian flight training operation in the world with three campuses and over 150 aircraft and flight training devices. The Helicopter Training Division is located at the Grand Forks, North Dakota campus and logs over 5,000 hours in helicopters annually. According to Ron Depew, UND's chief helicopter pilot, the flight department plans to replace its existing fleet of helicopters with more mission-specific and technologically advanced helicopters. UND's cadet is configured for VFR and IFR training. Don Dubuque, the director of UND Extension Program, said, We feel this will be a perfect platform to help us provide our students with the most technologically advanced training helicopter on the market. 
Our plans are for this to be the first of many R44 cadets, which will keep us on the leading edge of flight training. Each week we share with you an online video that one of our viewers found especially entertaining. Here is this week's Aero Video of the Week. Final lift off when SpaceX got back into the launch business last week, some people wanted to see it in an up-close and personal way, and they did it in their own airplane. Search SpaceX launch with Ben and Van on YouTube. After these messages, Advisory Circular AC-68-1 explained the new basic med rules. Redbird Flight Simulations is dedicated to revolutionizing flight training by designing, manufacturing, and delivering affordable and innovative flight training technologies. Each Redbird device is designed to enhance the training experience for pilots of all levels, from student to ATP. Redbird is quickly becoming the industry standard for flight training. Since Redbird introduced its revolutionary FMX in 2007, colleges, universities, and flight training operations around the world have integrated Redbird products into their curriculum. It's time to discover what Redbird can do for you. Join the migration. Sandia introduces the new SAI 340 Quattro TSO'd airspeed, attitude, altitude, and slip. With integral backup battery, safety never looked so good. See it now at www.sandia.aero. With so much news coming out of the aviation industry, we're summarizing a few of those other great stories in a brief segment we call Around the Patch. Advisory Circular AC-68-1 has been issued to explain how the basic med rules will be implemented. The 35-page document also includes an appendix that describes the medical examination required every four years. This applies to the alternative of obtaining a third-class medical. Rolls-Royce has entered into a deferred prosecution agreement with the UK's Serious Fraud Office with the approval of the President of the Queen's Bench Division. These agreements relate to bribery and corruption allegations involving intermediaries in a number of overseas markets. Air Force officials announced Naval Air Station Joint Reserve Base Fort Worth, Texas as the preferred location for the first Air Force Reserve-led F-35 base. It is expected to begin receiving its first F-35A in the mid-2020s. The first UAV to perform a perch landing using machine learning algorithms has been developed in partnership with the University of Bristol and BMT Defense Services. This allows a fixed-wing aircraft to land in a confined space through a bird-like morphine wing structure. Cabin Aerosystems Systems has delivered its first airframe from the reopened K-Max production line in Jacksonville, Florida to the company's plant in Bloomfield, Connecticut. Delivery of the first K-Max aircraft to a customer is scheduled to take place during the second quarter of this year. Well, that's it for today's trip around the patch. Now, let's get back to the rest of the news. Only 10 months since its introduction, DJI has informed its dealers that it is ending production of the Phantom 4 SUAS. And that's not all. It's reported that in a message sent to dealers, the company said that the Phantom 3 is also out of production, and the stocks of the Mavic Pro and Mavic Pro Combo are very low. The memo to dealers said that while production is releasing more and more aircraft, DJI would be withholding all production to service their own clients on DJI.com until the end of January 2017. The memo addresses the Chinese New Year, which comes at the end of January, where it can expect a two to three week break in production. It's hoped that by March of this year, DJI will get to the point where they have sufficient production. It's reported that the memo said once DJI gets the Mavic Pro production sorted out, the consumer drones will be limited to the Mavic Pro, the Phantom 4 Pro, and the Phantom 4 Pro Plus. Well, that's our program for today. Remember that Airborne Unlimited stream daily, Monday through Friday, with additional breaking news bulletins for important stories that fall outside of our normal deadlines. If you're watching us on YouTube, please subscribe and do check us out on Facebook and Twitter. Get comprehensive, real-time, 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aerol-news.net. Keep flying. We'll see you tomorrow.